The supervisors, we have an agenda in front of us. Do we have additions, corrections, deletions? Under VBC project uh, 3A, builders for us folks. And under items in the OLC, we commission. Second further discussion, hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those motion carried. County Attorney General discussion. I don't have too much other than that <clears throat> that lawsuit. It's interesting that the accident occurred on July 12th. They filed the petition July 12th. The question is, the statute of limitations is two years. Does that mean it runs on the 11th or does that mean it runs on the 12th? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I take it you feel it runs to the 11th. I feel it runs <laughs> on the 11th, yeah. That's where I throw my money. Because like if you're 45 years old, you turn 46 on your birthday. You right. don't have your birthday when you're still 45 and then turn 46 the next day. So, <clears throat> so it'll be interesting. They've got it, that attorney's got everything so messed up it's not even funny. Well, that's good in a way. <laughs> it is good in a, if You know, you think that would be good in a way, but it makes a lot more work for you when the other side doesn't know what they're doing. So, other than that, I don't have anything. <clears throat> anything, anything. No, it's been quiet on this end. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Something I need to talk to you about. Sure. I got a minute. <laughs> The one with uh, the oh, gotcha. yeah. There's something. Yeah, I go. Well, I was asked the other day too when it was on our agenda, and I, I was thinking it was the other one by Stacy Bill, and I forgot about it. I told him wrong. So, uh, BBC project update. Uh, good morning, Tom. Good morning, guys. Uh, it's a quiet week. We've got a pre-construction meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock at City Hall, if any of you guys are interested. And that was that before the pre-treatment plant. Um, I spoke with Wapasha last week. They are intending to mobilize up to the Osage plant middle to end of this week. So we should start seeing some dirt turn. They already did the one call, so I know it's going to be happening very soon here. And that's where we're at today. Uh, like I said, anybody's welcome to the pre-construction meeting if you want to go. It's pretty exciting. That in the council? Yeah, it's in the council. Yeah. Council. Yeah. We got our quotes for the numbers you asked, so. How they look? Reasonable? $9,217 is the cheapest. I mean, when you're that's adding 7.3 7 million, yeah. that's not too bad. No. I don't think it is. No. About 2,000 more than the next one. And the nice thing is, too, with going through the builder's risk right now is that it's on their radar to be wrapped into guys' regular policy at the answer. No gap, and you don't have to worry about anything. Very cool. Any other questions for me? All right, go. All right, well, I'll you be back next week. Maybe well, I'll see one tomorrow. Yes, sir. This came from Old Republic. I'll fill it out and send it in for you. Don't okay. But anytime you get these little again to me, that way you can just keep running the county and I'll take care of the stuff. Okay. All right. Well, if you want it, I'll... Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you want to act on the builder's risk? Oh, yeah. I was. Oh, here's the yeah. uh, Three quotes one from Hartford, one from Travelers, one from Chubb. Uh, the premium from Hartford was $12,417, or $12. Twelve thousand four twelve. Uh, Travelers was nine thousand two hundred seventeen, and Chubb was eleven thousand nine hundred thirty-three. So, my recommendation would be to go with the nine thousand dollar two seventeen from uh, Travelers, and then I just have to contact Jennifer Shana, and she would uh, prepare the authorization to buy form for a signature, and we can go with that. So that would be my motion, also. Okay. Been moved. I will second. Further discussion. Hearing none. Oakland. Aye. Well, aye. Motion carried. Uh, minutes. I did read them. Yeah, 
I read the minutes and always show that uh, uh, that we take a roll call vote. I mean, that, uh, <coughs> you know, and we one true. time, yeah. that, that's I think is uh, the most important thing, because mm -hmm. at one time uh, we didn't, I, and we got written up for that years ago. Mm -hmm. So we changed And I think we had taken it, but we just didn't log it as a roll call mm -hmm. vote or something. Uh, <coughs> further discussion? Hearing none, we'll put it in the motion period. Uh, Sheriff Beaver, did you have anything this morning? Um, just a couple things. Holding four this morning. One's uh, special needs, wheelchair bound, so he's with us for 30 days. So it's kind of a little bit more of a workload for our staff, but they're, they're handling that all right. Um, the uh, new radio equipment, majority of it was installed yesterday. And uh, electronic specialties will be back this morning to finish that up, and then um, the radio side of things will be back up and running. We need some repair on our tower yet, the lights and the camera, um, and then a phone system. But otherwise, we're making headway there. <laughs> so that's about all I got. New blanket for the smoke. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I just hope it doesn't get hit again before. Oh. We get some good use out of this equipment, but anyway, it's probably a blessing because it was old, old stuff. So now we got new yep. at very little cost. So right. it's just a hassle getting there, but we're just about there. So you guys got anything for me? I, it's, that's all I've got. It's been everything's been pretty quiet. I I take it Bratwurst Hayes was quiet. Yep. Yeah, they had a good crowd. I think they had a good celebration up there. We didn't have too many problems. You know, a few issues with underage drinking but you know for the most part went well and they had a good good Friday night bike ride Saturday and <clears throat> I suppose they finished up their softball on Sunday so yeah I think it went well you know well, you're always going to have the miners trying to get the few of them trying to get well with that many people in town and the number of citations which was pretty small half a dozen I think five you know I was pretty successful <clears throat> any zombies um no no I'm good Good. So that was good. good. Yeah. I think the camp uh, campground was full and a lot of people go right there after they do their thing, so that keeps them off the road, which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, I sat there at uh, noontime for two and a half hours and had a big sweater on and that, and I was happy to get home. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I mean, it was cold. So I, I bet it was. Yeah. That breeze was. Pretty chilly, it's like yeah. blowing off a glacier from someplace. <clears throat> yep, and that helps too, really. Yeah. You know, kind of keep everybody getting yeah. too out of control, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it went well from our okay. standpoint. Uh, fireworks permit, we have uh, one. Yeah, for flashing thunder fireworks, which will be uh, on August 2nd at the Lawrence Duncan's pasture. And make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and second. Further discussion? Vote Lander. Aye. Walk. Aye. Motion carried. A cigarette permit that apparently is up at uh, Mona. Up at Mona. Old Boone Two Incorporated is the name of the business. 
What apparently has happened is uh, cigarettes in Minnesota must have gone up. Was it a dollar something a pack? Mm -hmm. like a dollar seventy, pack? Or something. like a dollar seventy-five, I think, a pack. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's some creative individuals not only uh, here in Mitchell County and uh, I understand in North County too that uh, are opening up basically smoke shops that. Uh, they don't have to drive all the way to St. Ansgar to get their spokes. They <laughs> so uh, they bought the old grocery store, you know, that's kind of right on that curve that uh, uh, Herman Keeney's used to own. And, uh, so many of them. I don't know who I was talking to the other day, but they were at some, they were coming back to Pennsylvania at a truck stop or something like that, and this trucker bought a pack of cigarettes and they were $19 a pack. Wow. And he said, that's cheap, they're tw over $20 a pack in New York. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Yeah, a long time from when... Do you imagine what a carton of them cost? Or that'd be $200. Hmm. Over. <laughs> I used to buy them for a dollar fifty a carton back in <laughs> fourteen cents overseas when I was in the service. A pack, yeah, yeah. twenty four back here in the states. Yeah. Yeah. But I quit. <laughs> I'd have to still be working. Don't that be something? If he was a two pack a day guy. <laughs> anyway, I'd make a motion to approve the cigarette permit. I will second. Further discussion. Hearing none, vote Lander. Aye. Walk, aye, motion carried. Meetings attended. I had two meetings, CSS and um, Each County Economic Development. Uh, Each County Economic Development, we've got our new brochure done and Brenda will be around. And it's amazing, you go through that, it's really interesting to how much you act, actually does get done throughout the year. Um, she went through her staff report. Um, sounds like balance they're hiring 22, you know, people. Just pretty much same stuff throughout. She does her her um, visits. Talked a little bit about housing, um, community development, and then her building report and workforce and organization administration internship. She's going to write, well, we have an intern that's going to write articles on industries and economic development it gives this intern $100 for every article that's published, so I thought it was kind of neat. And County Social Services was in West Union at the Palmer Hospital, and that was there again, through the minutes, and I don't see anything big that jumps out. Uh, discussed our budget, we're still projecting a $7 million carryover, but on a lot of the numbers anymore, they look at that and then they're, they're trying to not fund some of Bob's ideas. I mean, I mean the things that now you get this money and you could do other services for folks. Well, and some of them are a little leery about that, maybe we should wait a year, see what how we end up. and where it's going and the only problem is you wait, you've got this big fund balance, state sees the fund balance, he said, oh, you don't need this money and that's the problem, why is it? Be <coughs> so anyway, that's what's going up against. So that was pretty much my community. I had one in Des Moines yesterday that I cannot report on and uh, the other one is uh, this morning I had a I thought a real good meeting with uh, the Stony Crip Coffee Club. We discussed uh, the brochure that uh, we're putting out for uh, the courthouse and uh, uh, we had a long discussion on uh, items two and three. Uh, item two being uh, should we uh, uh, fund uh, uh, a new courthouse with uh, our one cent option sales tax, uh, pay for part of it with property tax, and uh, uh, the other being uh, should we go ahead and uh, uh, 
fund it with uh, sales tax and proper or, and uh, <clears throat> TIF money and no property tax. And uh, uh, there was uh, a number of them that really didn't mind the idea that they had a little skin in the game. And uh, uh, there's others that uh, were happy with uh, options th uh, three that uh, uh, let uh, uh, both uh, uh, both items, uh, uh, property tax and uh, uh, TIF revenues, let both of them uh, pay for it. Uh, then, of course, the discussion uh, came up of uh, what if uh, uh, what if you get over 50 percent of the vote, but you don't get 60 percent? And uh, so I gave my opinion on what I would do, uh, possibly uh, using uh, revenue bonds, uh, going ahead with it. And uh, we had that discussion. And, and uh, when it was all said and done, I think uh, uh, that group felt we'd done our homework, that uh, we we done due diligence, we tried very hard to come up with a workable pro uh, program, and they really feel we need a courthouse uh, a facility and they were happy with, uh, well the other thing too is that uh, then why do we have as much storage space and this and that as we do and so I explained I mean everything is really predicated on the second floor. Uh, the size of uh, uh, the uh, court facilities uh, determine what the first floor in the basement was going to be and so uh, That's your footprint. Uh, yeah, that, that, <clears throat> the second, uh, the judicial uh, determined everything else, and their, their only other concern was uh, what would we do with the annex. Uh, they felt that if, uh, 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 it should be possibly torn down, but uh, the county keep the property uh, for if we ever need. Uh, there will be. Uh, there is a plan for the annex. Oh, okay. Talk to Brenda someday about it. Okay. <clears throat> there is a definite plan. Okay. So that not was... for the building, but the site. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. So that was my two. No, uh, uh, I kind of had the same conversation with different people, just like you. Um, a lot of people out there don't see a problem putting a little of it on dead screws. You know, and I talked to Barb about debt service. You can, 30 cents per thousand on debt service will generate roughly 200, I don't know, 230,000 dollars a year for the county. So I mean, if you're looking in, at that, if it, 30 cents on, you know, on 100,000, it'd be what, 30 dollars? Not very much. Anyway, well, anyway, time will tell how that plays out. Well, I was up to Stacyville on Saturday, and, and uh, uh, one of the movers and shakers up there felt too that uh, basically the Stacyville people were for uh, voting for the new courthouse. He, he really felt that was uh, at least part of his group was. Yeah. So it'll be interesting this week to see what happens at uh, the right. fair. Yeah. Tony Engineer, uh, good morning there, Mr. Brown. Good morning. Did we win? We won. Well, we were all going to come down and watch. Oh, well, that would have been great. I'm going to yeah. join Sons of Anarchy tomorrow, so. <laughs> all right. I've done some review on these bridges and stuff that we're replacing through FEMA or from the flooding, and I think that if we can get the rail car pipe, That'll be our best. That'll be our cheapest option, and it'll probably be the quickest option to get it back open. If we have to go to box culverts, it's going to take longer just because they got to manufacture that stuff. Now, I don't think that what I've been looking at getting from these other pipe guys that I'm not sure there's a whole lot available to us either. So we may go corrugated next before we do a box. I mean, I like boxes. It's just if we go box culverts, there, <clears throat> there's a good chance they won't be open until fall. On the corrugated, does, how does that compare with the rail cars? Well, price-wise, they're going to be a little bit more expensive. Corrugated. Hydraulically, they're a little bit rougher, so they got to go bigger sizes. Because the, the rail cars are a smooth, 
Right. Smooth wall, they're more efficient than corrugated. But corrugated. Corrugated will cause turbulence. Yep. Yep. So. so I've got, you know, when I estimated the cost of one or two of these box culverts versus rail car, you're talking almost twice as much money. I'm going to try to get something put together, maybe put some plans together now so we can quote these out and get these things taken care of as fast as we can. How many do we have? We've got... Two big ones, and the other one's an old bridge that had a floor in it, so we'll just try to match that one. I think that one can take a 10 foot rail car. The other one's, I've got one 10 foot rail car, I've got a location with three eighths and a location with three nine foot. So I mean, there's quite a bit of pipe, but it's the fastest way to get them back open. Right. And like I said in the past, a, a triple rail usually runs us around. $60,000 start to finish. Depending on what they're charging. I mean, if they're running low on them, maybe they're not as cheap or can't get them, we're going to go to option B and, and so forth. So, you guys are out uh, bringing shoulders back up against the hard surface. I felt that I pulled some guys off the rock room in order to get that accomplished because it's important that we get that stuff brought back up. So, and we have, we've used some of Paul's trucks. To, to subsidize what we haven't been. I told the guys I want no less than four trucks running. It's more efficient for folks to be in the quarry loading, and then uh, we can keep things running. Otherwise, if we've only got one or two trucks running, we can hold up. And even if we run close to the quarry, it's still, it's still slow. Um, up in the northeast corner of the county, uh, the Aspel Quarry doesn't have any rock in it so for us to run the rock on. Well, I've talked to Lindsay about it. And uh, he's given me a quote for running material from Dino to the northeast corner. He's given me a, a, a complete, is that right, a complete price from, for the material in the hall and to lay it down. It's nine, I can't remember what, 980, eight, 989 a ton. And the regular rocks, <clears throat> the rock is a little different. It's a, it's a mixture of, of a couple different beds. One's a harder rock, one's a softer rock. The fines are all kind of mixed together. We're going to get a sample to take a look at it. But even for that price, the, the rock itself is six dollars a ton, so the haul is three, three eighty nine to haul, which is a lot, which is pretty pretty reasonable when they can haul twice as much as we can. They'll use their super dumps and they'll use their trucks and pups. They can haul thirty ton, we can haul fifteen. Twice as many trips for us compared to them. So I think it's a good deal for us to get them out there. And if things work well, maybe we'll. Maybe if I talk to Lindsay, we got maybe a little bit bigger stretch we can add to it if you've got the time in the trucks. Maybe not. You guys got some stuff coming up with Matthew too, right? So anyway, that's where we're on the rock running. Uh, the only other thing I got for you is to approve the award of the contract for the Hickory Avenue Bridge box culvert project. I stated last week that the project came in at 150275 dollars my estimate was 150,000 each hundred and change, whatever. Um, you approve the project, we'll get the contract sent out to the contractor, they can send it back to us for signatures. The next, you know, when I get the stuff back, I'll have to put on the agenda that you approve the contract and bonds, and we we'll get the process going. They have on this project, they have 25 working days with late start date of September 16th. So that doesn't mean they can't start sooner. I mean, it's the latest they can start. And they'll give $1,000 and they liquidate the damages after the 26th. After the 16th, or so. So well, it's coming right up on us. Yep. <clears throat> the faster we get these contracts pushed through, we could probably have these back. They'll probably send, we'll probably have the contract back by next week if I can get it sent out to anyone that's signing this back. Hopefully. To make a motion that we've approved the kind of been the contract with the project BROS. Dash County 66, 57, 8J 66, whatever. Yeah. That's the, the yeah, official Hickory, project number. Hickory Avenue Hickory Avenue Avenue Box Call. Box call. Okay. Uh, second. Further discussion? Hearing none, both of them. Well, I'm And we are still working on 
the small culverts. I think what Jim's done is he just grabbed the culvert box, the culvert books that we have in the office and started just breaking down on the map and then I'm going to go through and maybe try to pick and choose which ones are more valuable to us than, you know, if it's a, if it's a three by three box, maybe that's not as big a deal as a, a six by six that, you know, these things are going to be, if you guys decide to do this, um, you know, to, there's hundreds of these boxes out there. So, I mean, to replace a, a three by three box with a pipe, we're talking a couple thousand dollars just to do that. I mean, it's going to take a lot of these to get you 1.5 million. So what I'm also going to do is look at uh, some smaller structures that don't meet the requirements of our federal, federal aid system. If it's less than 20 feet, it's not in the federal aid system, which means it wouldn't qualify technically. So I'll look at some of those structures too. They would be bigger pipes and things like that. So. Is there such a thing as knocking that curve off and adding on? I think in some instances it could be possible. The problem is trying to tie the extensions to it because usually a time from the outside, and we could do that if you could get the boxes made, over excavate the road and put tie bars in it. You gotta still drill through the whole box and the new box will come with a hole in it and try to tie them together and make sure of that. Or we could tie them from the inside, I guess it all depends. But if you've got a, and the, the bad part is that some of these small three by three boxes are in really good shape. There's no reason to take them out, they're just not wide enough for the road. So. Well, and, you know, keep in mind, we're still, we've got all this FEMA stuff, all this federal aid stuff, we've got all this box culvert stuff going. Jim's swamped, and I'm swamped too, putting this stuff together, so we'll do our best to get what you need. It just, <coughs> well, that brings around another question. How many more years is Jim going to be with us? Well, it's he can leave at any time. He's right, got his flares in. Is there such a thing as getting somebody to help out or? Learn the job. Could be. I mean, well, maybe that's something you asked him. I mean, that he. I don't think he's looking oh, well, near in the future here, but it'd be nice to get somebody trained in. But I mean, you know, if he's planning on staying around till 62, it's not a problem at all. But if he's thinking, uh, like you say, two, three, two years down the line, oh, yeah, I'd, I mean, <clears throat> I'd like somebody with him for a minimum of a year. Well, all of his experience and what he does. It'd be beneficial. I mean, you look at my office in the next few years, and we're going to, you know, I'm sure tomorrow's going to be soon. Mm -hmm. There you go, too. And so we're going to train somebody in there. That's, you know, she does a big part of invoicing and payroll and everything else. There's a big deal there to learn, too. So. Well, back to uh, the culvert thing. I mean, uh, we really have to have this as part of our uh, urban renewal. But then we don't have to do anything, you know, for uh, next summer sometime or later. So, I mean, uh, what you're saying is you want it in the urban renewal, you don't necessarily have to sell the bonds right away, right? Well, even if we sell the bonds, if we're part of the whatever, the, those bonds can, uh, uh, we can collect interest. We can put the money in the bank. And, and uh, so it won't, I mean, yes, it'll cost us a little bit. But, but, I mean, we don't have to necessarily replace them just as soon as we. Uh, as soon as we sell, I mean, you know. Right, uh, because we're going to have plenty of projects. You know, we still got to get these ditches cleaned out with all the corn stalks. That's going to be a project that we're going to pull out to contractors, kind of like we did in the last flood, which I wasn't here for, but Jim's got that experience. Come on. Huh? When did you come on? Nine. Tail end in nine, yeah. The flood was in eight. And yeah. I know we were still getting FEMA money after that, yet. I think maybe last year we finally got a, a payment from FEMA yet, too, which was not many years later, so. What well, came with interest, I'm sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of interest. So we also I just I can't remember what I was gonna say now. We've got the, the that stuff to do, the the ditches. There was one other thing. Oh, and I want to present to you guys some new letters. I know one letter is a farm within the right of way. We're seeing that get more and more pronounced. People are kind of encroaching the right of way a little bit. Some places it's getting to be a problem, some places it's not yet. And also debris, we're getting a lot of field rock getting put in the right of way. Some of them 
they put them right next to field driveways, and I know there's one location that's got it piled up. If we hit it with the wing this winter, we're going to break something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. what would happen in the past was I, there were letters that the board signed that the engineer sent out whenever he saw an issue. Now if we do that, just I'm sure we're going to get a lot of upset people, but we can't we can't allow it and cause us to break stuff. I mean, in the winter time, that's critical. We break a wing, we're out for a while, and then you got people calling, where's the plow at? Right. So, I mean, it's, in a way, it's just not a good thing. Anyway, it's their field, it's the field rock, it should be put somewhere out of the way where it's not bothering them the right way. So, they don't like it, you spread rock and snow into their field. <laughs> I know it, but I mean, and maybe some of the sounds people would. Anyway, I just know that that's getting to be a bigger issue in the county since I don't know that there's been a whole lot of enforcement being done to it. And we haven't in the past done a whole lot of enforcement if we don't see it really affecting us, but it just gets out of control after a while. We kind of need to reel it back in. Well, we've always, you know, allowed people to uh, use the ditch as their burn pile. Yeah. And, you know, and we've asked, you know, when it starts to get about so high, would you please clean it out mm -hmm. and then start over? And that hasn't yeah. been a problem. I mean, you know, so what, uh, I'm not going to go and, and slam everybody with a letter. I just want some of these that are going to be pretty bad. I mean, yeah. yeah, you could look at the Code of Iowa and say there's no gray area at all. It's yay, yay or nay. It's yeah, all I mean, you're, not, you're not supposed to allow to burn in the ditch. Well, you're not you supposed to allow rock. rock. You're not supposed to yeah. allow, you know, the right of way <clears> thing <throat> is a little bit tougher when you're farming, but if you've got no ditch, then it's pretty obvious that <laughs> you're farming in the right of way. But, um, when it becomes a problem is when we kind of need to send the letters out. So. Yeah, no, I have no problem. What What do we do with the rock? What do we do with it? Or what are they going to do? Well, you know, the, the option is they can find a hole and bury it. Huh? Or they could, you know, I know there's some guys that'll put it on the corner of their, they'll just pile it in the corner and, you know, I, I like it when they do that. I mean, I know it, they realize it's their material, their rock. So. Pile it close enough to the road, and they're not that big. Sometimes people come along and take. Well, right. I mean, there's a lot of people <laughs> who are, you know, yeah, sell it to Menards. They'll sell it to landscapers in town. Absolutely. Um, but at any rate, that's something we're looking at. And also, we had the uh, we had the umbilical <laughs> pumping line issue last year that we got a policy set up for that. I know I had one individual call and request to meet. So he knows where to put them, but I like to get a policy in place so everybody knows what's going on. That's what I try to work on in the next couple of weeks, too, so we can Why don't we see, too, if we can't get those uh, deer signs up south of St. Ansgar? They're not up yet? I know they were, lo they were located. Not that, I, not that I remember. I'll take a look. I know that they located them. The signs just maybe hadn't been. See, there was a bunch of them killed on the interstate yesterday. It was surprised how. Uh, no, we have it located. So I think, oh, okay. I know Jim had ordered the signs. I don't know if he just hadn't had the time to get out there to do it. I know that he did do a locate on the. On For the whatever post. reason, I mean, they re really seem to clip them in that four mile area. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Anything else? So later this fall, we'll have our design for the county shed. And <laughs> One more thing on the <laughs> Let me ask, where are we at with all that property? We own it. We own it here. We wrote the jack. Yep. We should actually be mowing it down there. I didn't know we shot. had possession of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, knowing that, maybe there's some ditch clean material we can put in there and we build. Yep. Perfect. We got a truck it somewhere. Yep. So. Yeah, I, I know that's on the list of things to do. I know it's been a long time. We've been talking about it a long time, and it keeps getting pushed yeah. off into the priority <coughs> level, But well, we can't get anything done this fall, so I'm not. Well, what would be I'm nice though is, is is look at it as okay. Maybe we don't get anything done this fall, but we can get a public hearing put together. We can have it break ground in the spring. Yeah, maybe. I mean, like you say, if you can get. Uh, material in there so it has uh, the winter to settle and, and so on. And, and, uh, so we don't own the second property? No. No. All right. 
I see Mr. Falk is here. Did you want anything with the uh, county engineer? Or? Nope, just kind of here to talk to Rich afterwards. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Do we have anything else in? No. Thank you, sir. Is it too much to think about it? Really? See the guys gas on that the motorcycle. You're driving your motorcycle. <laughs> I'll put a strobe light on it too. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. You bet. Uh, the management plan update. Uh, Anderson finishing finisher site owned by Jim Cannes in section 14 of Jenkins Township. Okay. I don't see we can be sure. It seems that uh, Joe Marsden came in and wants to know if he should continue on been at about four weeks, right? Well, or but, probably close to or is it close to two months, I don't know. Okay, two months. Because I think that's, that's what, what we've always budgeted for is like <clears throat> um, four pay periods. Okay. So anyway I talked to Janelle and she says it's that uh, he told her that he's been over everything. And he's done all the uh, pavements and hard surface. And said he had a couple little things yet to check out. And well, if, I mean, if he feels he's probably a little later started with yeah. this year, but if he feels that there's a few things to get done yet, I mean, I really think we need to get them done. But right. uh, that conversation was brought up this morning too, and. and uh, uh, the guys were saying that uh, basically uh, weeds by their place were curling in that because he has been there. And right. We had this one guy complaining that they weren't curling yet, and they said, well, be patient. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I haven't had anybody complain about the weed situation. He's been real careful about staying away from anywhere there's grapes. So. Right. Perfect. Well, and... I think the one thing that uh, uh, really county conservation, you know, they own a lot of land and uh, they basically are not taking care of some of the thistles and that, that and I realize they're busy on other things too, but uh, come next year they're going to have to decide. Uh, well, if they would hire a part-time guy just to go out and clip the thistles, or if it's in a conservation reserve that they own, then the land or the person that's taking care of that is getting paid to take care of those thistles. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know if they're probably really coming out at the care facility either with mowing. Well, then they have to look at <clears throat> Maybe we need to advertise them and get somebody out there to, to take care of the mowing. Yeah, no, this year the one neighbor hasn't uh, complained to me, but other years he always complained that. Uh, uh, again, the problems with weeds and that on the county side, and, and that was always a sore point. But like I say, uh, uh, on one of the trails in that, I see there was a whole bunch of thistles that were long past that, you know, they had pretty gone. Cool. Pretty purple stage? Oh, no, they went, they were already white and fluffy. and Floating away? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, some of that uh, yeah. is getting... Uh, yeah, you're never going to get them all. No, but I know it. But it, just to make the effort to try to keep after them, I think that's for the law, too. And like I say, I don't think that's priority one for county conservation, but... Uh, no, they got to take care of the parks and... Mm -hmm. They've had more with the flooding, too, this yeah. year. But I bet you could find a part-time guy in the summertime that wouldn't mind going around taking care of those issues. Well, I think, you, you know, some of these... Uh, Retired farmers would love something like that. They I love it the other day. I thought somebody was in that under and said that they wouldn't mind. I told them to go to buy a, the, the roads out there. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, we we're going to retire from Fox, so mm -hmm. we'd like to help out the county. And I think he would be a really And the Democrats and Republicans, they convened and they both got candidates, is that correct? That is yeah. correct. No independent uh, at this moment. They have till August 30th. They're not in, in independent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Five papers. Oh, wow, that's a long time, yeah. 
Yes. Can, I, can I ask who the candidates are, Bob? Um, you know, Democrat is Shannon Paulus, and Republican is Deanna Eastman. Okay. Anything else for the government of colors? Probably is, but I can't think of what it is. If not, we will stand <clears throat> adjourned. If, uh, any big major issues in the paper this week? No. Are you the new editor? <laughs> I'm just the new editor for now. I'm the temporary editor, so I'm just trying to get a paper done. Hey, Mr. Northy is going to be in Mitch County here in a few minutes. Uh, yeah. That's where I'm headed. So I'm going to go see what he has to say with the uh, armed service guy. No, the fair's this week. Yeah. That's the big thing. <laughs> trying to get the fair covered. Well, give us some good coverage.